So about a week ago, I put out a poll on my YouTube channel asking people what Facebook ads targeting strategy they've been getting the best results with. Ever since the iOS 14 rollout, there's been a massive shift and change in the way that people have been advertising and the way they've been targeting people. And what that's done is it's created a big debate over what is better for dropshipping or what is better for e-commerce. If you're selling a physical product, what is the best type of targeting to do? Is it detailed targeting or is it broad targeting? The other option I added to the poll as well is lookalike targeting because that seems to have been forgotten because it's becoming increasingly more difficult to track people once they leave Facebook, then lookalike audiences have kind of been left behind. So what I thought would make an interesting poll would be to put it out to everybody who watches my channel because everybody who watches this has some form of interest in e-commerce. They're gonna be the types of people who are spending money on Facebook selling physical products. So it'll be a good study to find out essentially what's working best. So in this video, I'm gonna cover exactly what those three types of targeting are. I'm gonna give you, in my opinion, the best times to use them, based on my own experience. And I'm also gonna explain at the end of the video why you should be using them like that as well. Probably the boring part of the video, but in my opinion, the most important. It's okay to watch step-by-step -step YouTube videos and follow them step-by-step -step and sometimes it'll work out for you, sometimes it won't. But in the times that it doesn't work out for you, unless you understand that why and how things work, then when they don't work out, then you'll become stuck. So if you do want to be successful at this and you have a commitment and you want to make it work, make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video because the explanation of why these targeting strategies work is what's going to help you next time you watch anybody's step by step video not just mine and if it doesn't work out then you'll know exactly what to do next okay so the first type of facebook ads targeting strategy is detail targeting if we go back all the way to 2016 when i first started running facebook ads detail targeting was king that's what i first started out with i started selling what i called passion products and these were well the clue was in the name they are products that people are passionate about so these are pet products these are pieces of jewelry with certain animals on and the reason why those products worked so well back then, and they still do today, by the way, is because you would target people based on their interests. When you go into your Facebook ads manager and you create a campaign and you get to the ad set level and you get to that detailed targeting area, you can put in things like behaviors, what people do for a living, what Facebook thinks their average income is. But what you can also do is put what interests they are linked to. So Facebook will track people as they move across their platform and interact with different posts and different pages, their likes, that sort of thing and then they'll categorize these people into different interests. So if somebody has been interacting with dog related pages and been engaging with dog related videos, when you target dog as an interest, they will then be included as that audience. So back in the day when I first got started, it was brilliant because if you wanted to sell a piece of jewelry that had an elephant charm on it, you could target people who were interested in jewelry and interested in elephants. And it was just a match made in heaven. And that worked absolutely beautifully until the iOS 14 rollout came along. What the iOS 14 rollout did, kind of like in a nutshell, I could probably record a whole video on this, but I'll be behind the times by now, is that once somebody had left Facebook, there was an opportunity now for them to opt out of tracking. So once they had left Facebook, it made it increasingly more difficult. There are um, workarounds. There are certain apps like Cometly, which will do it for you. However, the amount of information basically that is tracked once they leave Facebook was severely reduced. So what this meant basically is when you would then use detailed targeting is it somewhat restricted your results. And from then, this is where broad targeting was born. Up until then, it had never really been heard of, at least I'd never heard of it. And the reason being is because if you target the dog's audience and there's 2 million people in that audience and Facebook can only track 10% of those people, if you allow Facebook to target the whole of entire UK, which is about 60 million people, and it can track 10% of 60 million, there's obviously a lot more people that it can track, and therefore it can optimize your results a lot faster because there's more information that the pixel is tracking essentially. That was the argument anyway. That is why people would say broad targeting work best, but we'll take a look at the poll results in a second, which may say differently. So we've got detailed targeting, which is where you select interests, Broad targeting is basically where you say to Facebook, go out and show it to anyone. And then you have lookalike audiences. So lookalike audiences is an audience that Facebook creates based off a pre-selected audience. So if you create what's called a custom audience and in that audience, you put everybody who has visited your Shopify store, you can then say to Facebook, 
create a lookalike audience, which is essentially an audience of people that are most similar to that source audience. So the people who have visited your Shopify store and typically lookalike audiences will always used as a way to kind of scale up your store because everybody starts from scratch going out to cold audiences, people who have never interacted or seen your business before. And once you built up that bit of traction and you had those people who had interacted with your business one way or another, then Facebook would soon start to learn who your ideal customer was or the types of people who were interested in your business. And once you had enough people on your list, you could then ask Facebook to go out there and find more people essentially that were most similar to those. So the poll, I put it out recently, there's only 30 votes, so it's not a massive kind of set of data to be deriving a 100% set in stone result from. So if you feel differently to this, make sure you comment down below and let me know what's been working best for you. But we can see from the 30 votes that detail tagged in 43%, Broad tagged in 40%. And then, like I mentioned earlier, look like audiences have kind of been left in the dust with 70%. Okay, so now that we've established exactly what these different tags and options are, and we've seen what's working for people right now, then when would you use them? And keep please keep in mind this is based on my own experience. The ultimate takeaway, I suppose, from this video is to test a little bit of everything and see what works for you. Okay, so when should we use detail tags in? In my opinion, if you're a beginner and you're running your very first few Facebook ads and you've had less than 100 purchases, then this is where you should be starting. Once you've scaled above that and you've got 100, 500, 1,000 purchases, then you could afford to start tags in a bit more of a broader audiences and kind of rely a little bit more on the Facebook algorithms to do its job. And the reason being for this then is I've come up with a metaphor that I'm gonna try and explain to kind of put it across in simple terms so you have an understanding of how the Facebook algorithm and Facebook pixel matures. Okay, so bear with me, it will be worth it, I promise. So let's say you are trying to sell a dog product and you set off into your local city center and every single person you saw, you walked up to them to try and sell them a dog product. The chances of coming across somebody who owns a dog and then buying the product there and then is probably going to be quite slim because without asking them questions first or without knowing what their interests are, then you don't know if they even own a dog and therefore trying to sell a dog product to somebody who doesn't own a dog, it's obviously gonna fall on deaf ears. You're not gonna have much success. And this is what broad targeting is. If, however, you compare this against detailed targeting, where you can pre-select what people's interests are, instead of trying to sell a dog product to the public in your local city center, the equivalent would be going to an expo that is purely for dog owners about dog training and then walking around inside that expo trying to sell your product. You know people are there because they have an interest in dogs. And therefore, as you're walking around talking to people, the chances are those people own dogs and therefore you're gonna have a higher success rate. So in its essence, that's what detail targeting is. And then the previous example is what's broad targeting. So the reason why I recommend anybody with a new or fresh Facebook ad account start with detail targeting is because Facebook becomes better with the more information it has. As a new ad account starting from fresh, it has zero information about who the types of people are that want to buy your product or interact with your business. And therefore, if you send it out to a broad audience, it's gonna go up to random people or it's gonna show your ad to random people, it's gonna put your ad in front of random people on their newsfeed, see what kind of reaction they have, and it's gonna take a lot more money and you're gonna to have to burn through a lot more people or show your ad to a lot more people if you're targeting a broad audience before Facebook learns who the right sort of people are. If you target a detailed audience, then you're gonna have a higher hit rate. I suppose the best way of explaining it is, is that every time your ad goes out, it's gonna be put in front of people who have an interest in dogs and therefore you have a higher chance of getting a response from that person and therefore Facebook gets more data to learn who your ideal audience is. And in a nutshell, hopefully that all made sense. Any questions, do please leave them down below. That is why I would use them that way and that is why I continue to use them that way. Once you have an established Facebook ad account and Facebook say themselves, they put a benchmark of 50 conversions a week. Once you're consistently hitting that, 
then you can start to kind of remove the interests and then give Facebook a bit more freedom, I guess, so to speak. So they have a larger pool of people to choose from. To wrap the video up then quickly, look like audiences, when would I use these from day one? The second you've got enough people on your list to start using them, start testing them, small budgets, see what kind of results you get. If it works, keep it going. If it doesn't work, kill it. Wait a week until you've got more information on those source audiences, run them again, see what kind of results you get. And again, just be super strict and super harsh with them. Cut any emotion. If it's profitable, keep it running. If it's not, shut it down. And so with that being said, then guys, I'm going to wrap the video up. Um, I didn't expect this video to be this long, to be honest. Hopefully I've explained things in a way using terms that make sense, regardless of kind of what stage you're at in your business. Hopefully I've offered up some clarity or made some of these subjects a bit more clear for you. Like I said, any questions at all, I want to try and help as many people out on this because this is a super important part um, to your business. Leave them down below. I will get back to you. If you need any extra help, check out my free training. 100% free, won't cost you any money. It's a top link in the video description down below. It will show you all the necessary steps you need to take to launch your business in the next 21 days. And as a thank you for signing up and watching as well, I'll also give you a 100% free copy of my PDF of 194 profitable products ideas for 2023 thanks for watching guys don't forget to comment like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one cheers